Dalvina, Guia Dolosana, Angita Talitakini and Navarong and Bula FM at Golden Point Resort, Basendo Nambando and Ahere, Vinaka. Bula Vinaka and Adam Gotevita, out to Ungo Nanti. Anda tali tahu kalau lembaga orang nak bulan FM, nampun tu ane sel. Nada kau macam leh sih, kau kerakki ane sih nak bulan FM nampun tu. Kalau ngau rakti kita ni buat apa? Anda tali tahu lembaga orang mana bulan FM, nampun tu ane sel. Ungu boleh lusi. Bulan FM nampun tu ane sel. FBC News, I'm Jackie Spate. In this bulletin, heavy rain causes flooding in Raki Raki. Confusion over no confidence motion supposedly filed by Sudelpa. And Health Minister issues heatwave warning for Fiji. Opposition members walked out of Parliament in the last hour. The House was debating amendments to the standing orders when opposition got up and left the chambers. The motion to amend the standing orders was passed unopposed. And we have Ali Kimbia standing by in Parliament. Aliki, I understand you spoke with Sudelpa officials. Why did they walk out? Well, uh, thank you, Jackie. Uh, with me is uh, the Attorney General, Ayashed Kayum. And uh, just a while ago, the opposition members walked out of Parliament. We, uh, FBC News spoke to the opposition leader, Rote Mumukepa, and she did mention uh, some of the changes that were made to the standing orders, which they did not uh, agree to. Uh, Mr. Said Kayum, can you elaborate more on this and uh, some of the reasons why they walked out of Parliament today? Well, I think them walking out is best known to them, but the, the reality is that the number of amendments that have been brought about have in fact been suggested by members of the committee, plus also the Secretary of the Secretary General to Parliament to make sure that the efficiency of Parliament uh, you know, continues or improves. And secondly, the other issue is that we need to be able to address some of the anomalies that does exist. It would appear that their objection to the uh, amendments to the standing orders are, two, are, two, are twofold. One of them is that they talked about the fact that the amendments which have now been approved by Parliament uh, is that we uh, have proposed the amendment which has been approved by Parliament that the committees, anybody can be the chairperson. You know, it doesn't have to be specifically stated in particular in the case of Public Accounts Committee that it has to be from the opposition. And they're saying, well, you know, it means it will be um, unfair, etc. Well, that's not true. I mean, the, the reality is that many countries in the world, the chairperson of the Public Accounts Committee is from the government side. We're not saying it will necessarily be from the government side. But the committee must decide on its own as opposed to the standing orders prescribing who the chairperson should be. The other objection they seem to have is that they're saying that the, the petitions, when at the moment, uh, you know, uh, when one presents a petition, even when it could be one person signing a supposed petition, it gets referred to a standing committee. That's obviously an abuse of the process. What we're saying is that the petitions obviously need to carry that weight, and for the uh, petition to be carried on to the standing committee stage, it must be approved by at least 40% of parliament. Now, even though a petition may not necessarily get the 40% approval to go to a standing committee, it does not stop the opposition from bringing it by way of a question in Parliament. It does not stop the opposition by way of bringing a motion in Parliament. So all those avenues are available. Uh, I think they seem to have a knee-jerk reaction. And hopefully they'll you know, uh, come to their senses and come to Parliament because I'm sure ordinary Fijians in Fiji want to see the opposition there uh, because they are being, apart from anything else, they've been voted in and also they, uh, they are being paid for it. Uh, so that seems to be the, the gist of why they're objecting. But the, the fact of the matter is that the amendments actually bring by a lot more efficiency brings by a lot more clarity in the standing orders. Jackie. Thanks so much for that update, Aliki. School shops and government offices in Raki Raki were closed this morning due to flooding in many parts of the town. Heavy rain in the early hours of the morning caused flash flooding in low-lying areas. Savaira Tambua has more. People of Rakiraki woke up to find creeks and rains overflowing as a result of torrential rain overnight. Provincial Administrator Ra Kelepi Kumbunameda says many areas were closed to traffic but no evacuation centers were opened. There's a ministry responsible for evacuation centers and disaster management in the province of Ra. 
I will understand there's always uh, ever ready, provided if the need, uh, if the need uh, arise. Yes, that, uh, this morning we have a few families that visit our office. We just told them to become. If the rain continue, we will arrange evacuation centers uh, uh, for them. Not only for the people of Fora and also those travelers who are stuck, feel free to contact your nearest police station or the DO's office. The National Emergency Operations Center is warning drivers and pedestrians to take extreme caution when traveling and to refrain from crossing flooded waters. Roads were closed in Korotale, Waimari, FSC and the Rakiraki access roads. In Tabua, Yalanro, Lakalaka, Nambuna Village, Dramasi and Nandale roads were closed to all traffic. Nambula Village, Apisai Nasara says, the water rose very quickly. I reached home at 5 a.m. coming back from work and noticed the water level started to rise. And within three hours when I went to tie the cow at around 8 a.m., water level reached my waist. The Commission of Western and relevant agencies are expected to meet tomorrow to assess the magnitude of the flooding and look at immediate mitigation options. Sabaira Tambua, FBC News. Tropical cyclone Winston continues on its southeasterly course between Fiji and Vanuatu. Nandi Meteorological Services Director Ravin Kumar says cyclone is expected to intensify and bring more rain, but does not pose any direct threat to Fiji. Ali Kimbia has more. Cyclone Winston was about 700 kilometers west northwest of Nandi early today. It is moving southwards at 12 knots and expected to continue on this track. It has a high probability to turn into a tropical cyclone uh, category 1 system in next 6 to 12 hours. At this point, the tropical depression does not pose any direct threat to Fiji. However, the associated weather and rain affects the country. As the cyclone intensifies, we can expect heavy rain, especially in the west, and a flood warning has been issued for all low-lying areas. The concern for us at the moment is the rain associated with this depression and the associated rain will, is expected to bring in some flooding of low-lying areas. The heavy rain warning is now in force for western and northern Viti Levu, northern Vanua Levu, Kandavu and nearby smaller islands, Yasawa and the Mamanuda group. Alikimbia. FBC News. There is confusion tonight in the corridors of Parliament regarding two motions of no confidence involving the Prime Minister and Speaker of the House. While Sodelpa says its motions are still alive, FBC News understands that nothing official has come before the office of the Speaker. Farzana Nisha has more. And the Land Transport Authority. And Opposition leader Rote Mumukepo was notably absent from Parliament this morning at a time when her party is supposedly trying to vote out the Prime Minister and the Speaker of the House. Both I can confirm. Both the uh, motions that you have mentioned. MP Semesa Karavaki contradicts Sodelpa colleague Bolitagu insisting the motion of no confidence in the Prime Minister will be heard tomorrow. It will come tomorrow in the discussion tomorrow in Parliament about filing, uh, whether it has been done or not, it will never change that. It will still be debated tomorrow. However, according to FBC News sources, the no-confidence motion to replace Varenge Bainimarama with Rote Mumukepa as Prime Minister was withdrawn within a couple of hours of being filed. But Sadalpa insists the motion is still in place. Do you think the party has enough uh, number to move this motion? Well, it's uh, procedural. It's in the standing orders and um, it's in the constitution and that's the legal pathway that we have followed. The numbers doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's just the opposition raising some, some issues that uh, by using those standings, uh, well, point of orders, standing orders to come through by way of those two motions. Sir, do you think do you, you have the number to move this vote? You'll find out tomorrow. Find it out. While Sadelpa tries to sort itself out, the Prime Minister says he's ready for any challenge. I, I don't know that, but if it's going to come out, well, we look forward to it. But uh, the leader of the opposition is not here. So how are they going to fight her case when she's not here? Or is she going to be hiding from uh, the pavilion at Albert Park? He said, what's going to happen today? Or uh, hide behind uh, Karawaki Sulu. But she, he's not, she's not here. So what 
In fact, half, half of the opposition is not here. They probably going to leave some, leave without pay. I hope. Sadapa so MPs insist that all party differences have been settled and they are united. However, by Nimarama beliefs, the opposition is clueless. Well, they are confused bunch of people. Seriously, they don't know where they're going. They don't know the direction. As I've said uh, yesterday, they can't even figure out who is the leader of the opposition. They're fighting amongst themselves. And uh, it's a pity, really, because uh, the people that voted for them thought they'd do them some good. But obviously, as I've continued to say, most of them, if not all, came on a, on a bunch of lies. Eh? They lied to the people that uh, voted for them, what they're going to come and do. And they lied about what's happening around our country. And that's why they got the vote. Secretary General to Parliament, Vinyana Namusi Malua, has documents. declined to comment on the mysterious motion. And now call upon Meanwhile, the it's understood that a motion of no confidence in the speaker was filed yesterday to be debated to sometime reports. tomorrow. Sadalpa members did not indicate whether General this motion was going to be withdrawn or not. Razana Nisha, FBC News. Fiji is experiencing the hottest weather in the last half of a century and it's going to get hotter. Health Minister Chone Usumate in a ministerial speech in Parliament has warned of the consequences of climate change on people's health. Ellen Stalls has more. The figures can't be ignored. We're going through some of the hottest weather in the last 50 years, according to Health Minister Chone Usumate. The summary of climate predictions for Fiji shows that temperature will continue to rise and the projection is more very hot days and warm nights and a decline in cooler weather. We expect that there will be increase in both the dry season and wet season. Usimate says increase in cases such as respiratory problems, those suffering from asthma and heat leading to more pollen in the air and molds in homes. He says diseases previously unseen in Fiji will also appear, while common ailments will be more prevalent due to extreme weather conditions. This include water and airborne diseases and diseases from rural air pollution. The minister says this will directly impact on the population due to climate change. Climate is now affecting humanity right now. It is a health issue right now. It is not something that will impact on health in the future. It's impacting health right now. The health ministry is encouraging people to be well aware of the situation Fiji is in and to adapt to these conditions. The Ministry of Health and Medical Services has been working closely with the World Health Organization and other development partners in developing and piloting adaptation arrangements. These include general awareness and capacity building to vulnerable communities where we know that communicable diseases are likely to rise as a, res as a result of climate change. Prevention protocols have been prepared for various communities and the health ministry staff are ready to deal with these issues and equip Fijians with the knowledge they need to beat the heat. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. Coming up after the break, more than $2 million paid in workers' compensation. I love listening to Gold FM at Golden Point Resort. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hola, my name is General from Rekker Village. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Moses from Valley. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Marida Manako. I'm from Kandavu. I like listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Silipa from Tavo Town. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Welcome back. This is FBC News. Fiji's exports have risen by 13.4% over the last four years. This was according to answer given by Attorney General Ayuside Kayum in Parliament today. Sainiani Mboila has more. Responding to a question from Ratu Soliano Matanitumbo in Parliament today, Sayyad Kayum said the export growth is due to the export income deduction incentive, which saw exporters in Fiji increase their sales abroad. In this period, total ex domestic exports have grown by 13.4%, with the highest export noted in 2015, which we expect, but the deduction will be done, amounting to 
billion dollars. Of course, Madam Speaker, the more exports you have, the more your foreign reserves grow because you are getting foreign reserves for the value of the goods that we send out. Sayed Qayyum says the number of companies receiving this incentive increased from 142 in 2011 to 184 in 2014. Export income deduction of 50 percent and decreased to 40 percent in 2012. In fact, WTO rules prefer that we don't have an income, uh, export income tax deduction. But the reason why we put it in place is because we are a developing economy, we need to have this in place. Uh, the WTO uh, requirement is that we continue to reduce this. Nonetheless, we maintain it 40 percent. Sayyad Kayyum says the domestic export total from 2011 to 2014 rose from $1.02 billion dollars to $1.1 billion. Sainiani Mboila, FBC News. The Employment Ministry is developing a national employment policy to enhance the dynamics of the labor market. Speaking in Parliament this morning, Labor Minister Semi Koroi Lavesau said the policy is being developed in an effort to better understand Fiji's labor market. He says the government has captured the real data on unemployment for the first time through the National Employment Centre. This policy allows the unemployed to choose freely their employment preferences, whether to join the formal employment service or self-employment service, foreign employment service, or to become a volunteer, including being a professional sports person. The Foreign Employment Service is also reviewing its criteria to target disadvantaged, unemployed people in isolated rural areas and outer islands. Fiji will host the Commonwealth Youth Secretariat for the Pacific Region. Youth Minister Laisinia Tuitumbo confirmed in Parliament this morning that talks are underway to finalize arrangements for the Secretariat. Tuitumbo says discussions are almost complete, with funding and manpower already confirmed for the office in Suva. Uh, cabinet uh, approved the proposed uh, memorandum of understanding and uh, the associate, associated budget at its meeting on Tuesday, 2nd February 2016. Uh, discussion uh, underway to have the MOU signed uh, on Fiji's behalf either by the Fiji's new commissioner in London, in London or when the senior Commonwealth official will uh, visit Fiji in the near future. Fiji will host 45 participants at a regional capacity building workshop funded by the Commonwealth Secretariat in June. Former civil servant Rudra Maharaj has been found guilty of one count of bribery by High Court assessors. Maharaj accepted $2,000 cash and two checks worth $10,000 for using his influence to procure a contract for Avin Prakash. He was an information and public relations officer at the Prime Minister's office at the time. Judge Justice Priyanta Fernando will deliver a sentence at 2.30 p.m. tomorrow. And on that note, it's Sports Now. Here's Jamie with all the very latest. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening in sports after the break. John McKee to use more local-based players in tournaments this year. An All Blacks medical officer encourages the use of traditional medicine. This and more coming up. मैं हूं रेयान खान गुरबो तालेबू के जैसे फेस्टिवल ए ग्रेट है गुरबो में उसी तरह मिर्ची एफएम नंबर 1 है गुरबो में एलीन लटका में मिर्ची एफएम को लॉक कर दिया जाए मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट हम नकाशी से सहमा ने हमारा फेस्टिवल जैसे नंबर 1 है वैसे मिर्ची एफएम नंबर 1 है माय नेम इज दिनेश हम नेंडी में काम करता है स्लीपिंग जॉइंट सप्लाई में और मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट पे आई लाइक इट मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट Only local players will feature for the Telecom Fiji Warriors side in the World Rugby Pacific Challenge next month. Vodafone Flying Fijians coach John McKee says he wants to expose local-based players to more tournaments this season. Josephine Avula has the details. Preparations have already begun for the Telecom Fiji Warriors with sites firmly set on winning the Pacific Rugby Challenge. I think that they're narrowing down the squad for the, for the PRC. The, the players have been um, 
working hard in the, in the daily training environment at the licensed training centres and, and there were some trial matches held last week. John McKee says he will give priority to players based in Fiji because he wants to develop a world-class team that can push the boundaries. The Warriors won't rely on seasoned national representatives making headlines in club rugby overseas. I yeah, see this year we'll, um, we'll concentrate on our local base players. I, I think, you know, from the list we've been looking at, I think there might be one player coming down from Japan. Um, but, but no, we, we wouldn't be getting any players here from Australia or New Zealand. Informal trials have been held to gauge the capabilities of each player. McKee is targeting the young who can bring fortitude, charisma and the Fijian flair. We want to um, select you know, the, the, you know, our best players here on island, but we're also with a view, view to the future, so we'll be um, picking some um, younger players in that squad as well. Confiji Warriors extended squad begins camp soon in preparations for the Pacific Rugby Challenge in Suva from the 8th to the 21st of March. Josephine Navula, FBC Sports. The TFL Fijiana team to play in the Sao Paulo Sevens in Brazil next week has been announced. Women's Rugby Coaching Director Chris Cracknell has named an experienced squad which includes the likes of Litia Nangato, Lucila Nangasau and Maria Rongida and Maria Rongida and Lavinia Tinai. Fiji is in Pool A with series leaders Australia, Canada and Ireland. The Fijianas are currently in 7th position with 8 points after their first tournament in Dubai. The Sao Paulo leg will be held next Saturday and Sunday. Traditional medicine should be considered by national rugby teams of the Oceania region for the benefit of its players. New Zealand All Blacks Chief Medical Officer Dr. Ian Murphy made this statement in light of Fijian-born winger Waisake Naholo being healed in his home village, Nandroma in Singatoka, right before the Rugby World Cup last year. He adds it's an added advantage to have herbal and western medicines work together. We should do everything in our power to help a player recover uh, from an injury uh, as best as possible. And if that means a, a, a blend of two um, complementary medical uh, approaches, so be it. But we certainly don't forsake one for another. Murphy was one of the invited guest speakers in the Oceania Rugby Development Workshop for Regional Coaches and Managers at the Tano International Hotel in Nandi today. The Vodafone Fiji side went down to Tahiti 9-1 in their third match at the OFC Futsal Championships in Suva last night. It was another disheartening performance for coach Intiaz Khan and his side, which still remains winless after three rounds of competition. Rohit Deo has more. Lack of experience, short preparation time and relentless pressure from opposition all added up as the Vodafone Fiji Futsal side was thrashed at 9-1 by Tahiti. Despite the loss, coach Intias Khan says he could have easily considered more goals. To be honest, the prediction by fans, there was more than 10. We got some texts, you know, people are saying, okay, we'll get about 15 or 17. Captain Mira Saib scored Fiji's only goal late in the second spell. This was their third loss in the tournament after losing to Nicoladonia 5-1 and Vanuatu 5-2. This was the first match we have played under pressure, and that is power play we're talking about. We have considered about six in power play when the, the, the Asians did that. So I think it's a learning stage. It's a learning stage, and people have to realize it's the first time ever that my team played under pressure. Goalkeeper Oliasi Tamanisa was injured in the previous match against Vanuatu, but forced himself to play in yesterday's match. Khan commended Tamnisa for his courageous effort. He was injured actually, he's forcing himself and now we've been, I've been saying to him, uh, no, keeper, don't, don't force yourself, if you're injured, just tell us. He said no, no, so, so he's playing for the national, he has nation pride, so he, he wanted to be there. So at last I had to force him, let's try, no, we do power play. There is a rest day today as tournament resumes tomorrow. With Tahiti playing New Caledonia at 3pm, Solomon Islands taking on Vanuatu at 5.30pm, while Fiji meets New Zealand at 8pm. All at the Vodafone Arena in Suva. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Vodafone Fiji football under-23 rep Garish Prasad is still under medical supervision and his availability for the upcoming Brazil tour in April is yet to be confirmed. Prasad was ruled out before the recent Spain tour due to injury and was replaced by Saula Wanga. PGFA Vice President Tarines Reddy says the Rio Ace is still recovering and they hope he will be able to join the team in camp soon.
We have named him in the, him in the 23 squad, but uh, we will examine. We have got our doctors. We'll, we'll see that whether he's fit to come to the camp, then only he'll be invited to come down. The team will depart for Brazil on the 24th of April and return on the 7th of May. That's it from Sports Tonight. It's back to Jackie now with business. Westpac and Vodafone Fiji will sponsor the Fiji Institute of Accountants Congress for the next three years. The two companies presented a $250,000 check to the FIA today. Westpac and Vodafone say the Congress is important to the accounting profession as it brings over high-profile speakers with global and commercial insights. Institute President Nozab Farid has welcomed the support. So Westpac and Vodafone, thank you very much for being nice to us. And they're going to be nice in the future as well. They've already promised. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the way this country benefits. This conference is not a uh, not a, just a party as such. It is an experience for all the participants. The FIA Congress will be held on April 21st and 22nd. <laughs> While tropical cyclone Winston remains well away from Fiji's western shores, it is having some effect on our weather, bringing us showers overnight and around the country today. Looking at the temperatures, northern and western centers were the warmest, hitting 35 in Sabu Savu, 34 in Nambasa, and 32 in Suva. It was a little cooler in the west where Ba and Nandi reached 30, Lautoka 28. The west also got some much needed rain. We can expect pretty much the same conditions tomorrow with scattered showers and the chance of thunderstorms in most centers. And looking ahead to the weekend, the warm humid conditions will continue. At sea, a strong wind warning is in effect for the Vatuira Passage, Yasawa and Mamanu the waters with northerly winds gusting to 40 knots and rough to very rough seas. Recapping the main stories tonight. Confusion over motions of no confidence supposedly filed by Sedelpa against the Prime Minister. Heavy rain leads to flooding in parts of Rakiraki in the morning and Health Ministry issues warning against heatwave across Fiji. This week's poll question, in light of the Sydney Sevens, we are asking... Is the Fiji Sevens team on track to winning gold at the Rio Olympics? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Good night.